I'm quite aware that the lighting is changing a little bit and this is probably not the most soundproof place to be filming, but I was studying and I actually like received a message from one of my friends who's in first year and he was asking me like how to make notes in first year and I just thought maybe I could make a video on that. So I thought I would make a video on how I make notes and how I study like in medical school. The way I want to like break this video up, firstly I want to talk about what I do during a lecture, then what I do after a lecture and finally I'll give like some of the resources that I use, I'll just put them on the screen because I do tend to use like different sources for information. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to think about is whether to go digital or physical. Basically, you don't need the Apple ecosystem to revise. Yes, I'm saying that whilst I have my MacBook in the frame, but I don't have an iPad and I've never needed to use an iPad. I used to use a Samsung tablet in first year and I actually would highly recommend that tablet because I think the stylus to that is better than the Apple Pencil. It's just way more fine and it feels more like an actual pen. I tend to use my laptop when I'm like in a lecture and then I also tend to use a notebook after the lecture. So let's talk about the lecture first of all. The platform that I use to make my notes is OneNote. I tried Word in first year, I tried Notion, and I also used to use Anki. But out of all of those platforms, Notion I would say was probably the best because I do think it's quite aesthetically pleasing. Word was just a bit cumbersome and Anki, I didn't like Anki because of the fact that I felt with Anki that I wasn't really learning anything because I was condensing so much information down onto one flashcard or two flashcards. I also hated the fact that they piled up a lot. Anki just didn't work with me. I used to be an Anki girl and now I'm an ex-Anki girly. I liked OneNote because A, I could divide the like years of my medical school degree up. Like I have a notebook for each year and then within each notebook, there are different modules. And then within each of those modules, I used to basically break down all the lectures. I would also have sections for practicals. I would have a section just for OSCEs and just for exams. And then I would also do this thing where I would have like a timetable and it would be what's called like a retrospective timetable. So basically based on how busy I was in like a certain week, that would sort of determine how much work I would do. Let's say that I'm in a lecture. Doesn't matter whether it's a face-to-face -face lecture or a virtual lecture, I'm just in a lecture. Um, I don't like to download the slides. I know people do like to do this, but I personally don't, A, because of storage space, and B, just because I feel like a lot of slides are kind of pointless. There are some slides where it's just a picture, and I'm not the type of person to learn from just a picture. I need lots and lots and lots of text to learn something. So I like to use the learning outcomes that come with each lecture to create my, my notes. I would basically paste these learning outcomes onto one note and then I would break them down. So I would highlight each learning outcome in yellow and then using a combination of what the lecturer says, what the lecture slides say, and then um, any other resources that I used, so textbooks or online websites or YouTube videos, I would then use that to create like sort of points for each learning outcome. One of the things I really liked about OneNote was A, there's this feature to dictate. So sometimes what I would do during a lecture is I would just click dictate and the lecturer would speak and it would um, scribe what they were saying. That was really helpful if I didn't want to like watch a recording again. The other thing I would really recommend doing in OneNote is I would embed YouTube videos onto my OneNote and I still do this because it would save a lot of time from having to like go back onto YouTube and search for like a specific video. It meant that everything was there. It was all in the maybe that's why it's called OneNote. It was all on the same note. Okay so at the end of the lecture I would usually have one document I would do one document per lecture. So then let's say each module has about 60 lectures. So there would be 60 sub pages within the module page. Now that I've got my running document, sometimes it can be too long. So what I would do is I would copy all of that information and paste it into ChatGPT. I don't know whether people use ChatGPT or not for making notes, but I have been using it since first year and it's really helpful. I would basically say to ChatGPT, summarize in a table, and I would put the information into ChatGPT and it would do the work for me. I would do this if I had a lot of stuff to learn or I would particularly do it for pharmacology notes because you know you need to know like the drug name, the mode of action, side effects, contraindications, cautions. It would be really helpful to have all that information in a table and rather than me making that table, if I've let's say bullet pointed all of this information, 
just ask ChatGPT to do it. My sort of golden rule is that I'm not going to spend more than one hour on a lecture. I don't care. After one hour, it's done. Honestly, life is too short to spend hours and hours on lectures. The other thing is if you're spending so much time making notes, then when are you going to actually learn that content? I think no matter how hard you try to keep up with work, you're never going to be able to when you're at uni because you're never going to be able to, in my opinion, maintain a good social life, a good work-life balance, have good physical, have good mental health, and be on top of your studies and be doing well. Like, I don't know, maybe people can do that, but I can't. It's just too overwhelming. I'm not trying to be relatable. I'm just being honest, I've never been able to balance everything at the same time. And if I can cut down my work in some way, I'm gonna do it. If I wanna test myself, what I tend to do is I tend to basically like create questions and I put questions in red and I put the answer underneath and I hide the answer. So then when I'm going through the document, if I see something in red, I know, okay, that's a question. I can test myself with it. Some of my friends, they do like a big massive document with just questions um, and that works for them. So this year I'm on clinical placement. And so it means that whilst it's important to understand the basics of things, that's not really what you're being tested on in real life because in real life people have obviously loads and loads and loads of coexisting health problems. So what I like to do is I like to take a, like a notebook and I'll basically break down a patient case into like their history, the presenting complaint, the family history, social history, drug history, and I can like sort of work my way around that, like like a mind map, I guess. One thing I realized pretty early on in uni was that the order in which lectures were delivered wasn't great, at least in my medical school. I didn't understand why I would have a lecture on, let's say, the HPA axes on Monday, then I would have a lecture on Cushing's disease on Tuesday, and then Wednesday would be on like diabetes drugs. And then Thursday would be on like the anatomy of the thyroid. Like basically the lecture, the, the layout wasn't great. So what I did was I grouped my lectures based on topics. So let's say lecture 19 and lecture 25 were on the thyroid. Then I would do lecture 19 and lecture 25 together. If lecture 1 and lecture 4 and lecture 7 were on Cushing's disease, then I would do those lectures together. And I would have like a checklist to make sure I did each one. This really helps because it means that you're like, I guess, using your brain, like you're actually using your brain to solve a problem as opposed to just writing notes aimlessly for hours. I also do think that it reduces the workload because if you're, you know, able to like solidly understand a topic when you read it, I don't know, it just means that when you actually go to sit an exam, you're retaining more information. At least that's the way I work and that's what's worked best for me. Okay, so we've talked about note making platforms. I've talked about how I make my notes and lectures, what I do after a lecture. Finally, I want to talk about resources that I use. The first one that I use is Quesmet. I've worked with Quesmet before in the past. This video is not sponsored, but I have a discount code on screen and down below for 10% off Quesmet. They have a really, really good textbook, which breaks down like the definition, epidemiology, pathology, pharmacology, physiology. Everything is organized really well on their platform. And there are also MCQs and OSCE resources for preclinical and clinical students. I also like to use Geeky Medics and Zero to Finals. These websites I think are good for just brushing over and gaining like a superficial knowledge and also for keeping up to date with nice clinical guidelines. But I don't think that they're good for actually understanding like a topic. I think the best way to actually understand a topic is to literally look it up on the internet and find a paper that was published on it and then read through that. There's a really good Chrome extension that you can use to highlight information. So I would do that and I would use Quesmed's textbook if I'm trying to like understand something. And then I would use Zero to Finals and Geeky Medics to consolidate it. There's a really good book called Medicine in a Minute. I wouldn't recommend a book if I didn't use it myself, but this book is genuinely super helpful for like just, again, skimming through topics. And it has practically everything you need to know from first to final year of medicine. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Just leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye!